in this video, I'm going to show you how to figure out basic probabilities with D6 for wargaming or any other traditional game. Let's get saucy. Happy sauce. Thanks for coming back. Now, if you play Kings of War, Warhammer, or any sort of traditional game, it's going to revolve around a very important thing, the D6. But if you're playing war games, it relies on a bunch of them. And a lot of people in my area want to know how to calculate the odds, but they don't necessarily know how to do it. I remember when I first started with Wargaming, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect when I put a unit into another unit. And over time, I've learned tricks and uh, various math techniques that are very simple to figure out what to expect out of your dice. Now, if you already know how to do something like that, this video really isn't for you. Unless you just want to check my math, you're absolutely welcome to. But if you don't know how to do that, I'm going to show you some basic techniques that you can use to calculate that um, and figure out what the average roll should be. Now keep in mind these are just average rolls. Um, dice can vary, but this will at least give you kind of an idea of what to expect when you throw something in so that you can make some basic strategies. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the system actually works and why it works the way it does, and then I'm going to give you some simple math techniques and a ultimately a, a chart that allow you to do this. So let's get to it. Let's get saucy with PowerPoint. Hobby sauce, the TED talk, dice maths. All right, guys, let's take a look at a single D6. A D6 has six different sides and theoretically all should have an equal chance of rolling. Spoiler alert, that's not true, but we'll go with it. So we have six possible results on the die but ultimately we only get one result. That means that any individual side on the die has a 1-6 chance of landing, or a 16.7% chance, whichever's easiest for you to think. Now, that's only a single die, but when we roll a bucket of dice, it doesn't matter because each dice is individual. It's not affected by any other roll. So even if we have multiple dice, we just apply the same effect to all of them. And that's easy to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. If we needed a six up, we would have, we have it right there. It's a one in six chance or a 16.7% chance. I'll teach you later how to figure that out on the fly. But what if we had, what if we needed more? What if we had a five up, for instance? That doesn't allow a six only, it allows for a five and a six. Well, now we have two out of those six results that are good. That simplifies to one third or 33%. And that means that 33% or one third of the dice that you roll are going to be successful. Let's keep going. A four up allows for a four, five, and a six. Those are three out of six results that we want. And that simplifies to one half or 50%. That means that every two dice you throw down, one of them's going to be good, which means that you're going to lose half your dice when you have a four up. Now, if we have a three up, that allows for four separate results. That simplifies to two thirds or 67.7% chance, whichever one's easier for you, but that's how many successes you're going to get. And then if you have a two up, you have five out of six results or 83.3% chance. That's kind of a hard number to figure out, but I'll show you how to do it. So let's do this practically. Let's say we have dice we want to roll. Let's say we have 12 attacks that we're throwing out. Now I've picked the number 12 because it's easily divisible by six, which is what the D6 is based on, but this will work for any number of attacks. Sometimes you might just get decimals. As a side note, I would mention that any time you get a decimal for strategy purposes, round down. Never count for half a dice to do its work. So let's say we need a six up with 12 attacks. That's one in six, or in this case, two out of 12. So that's two hits. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. All right, so we have 12 attacks again, but this time we need five up. Well, we already learned that five up is one third or 33.3%, which means that we can just divide this by three. So we'll take 12, divide it by three and get four. So now we see that we get four hits on this. 
12 attacks again, but this time we need a four up. So we already learned that a four up is one half or 50% of the dice. So that means that we can just divide by two. 12 divided by two is six. We get six hits. What if we have three? Okay, three up, we learned, is a two thirds. Now, you may be able to figure out two thirds in your head, but I'm going to show you a trick just in case the number isn't easily divisible by three like this one is. So what we would do first is we would find out what one third is. We've already done that with five. So 12 divided by three is four, but that's only one third. So we can multiply this number by two now and get eight. That's two thirds, which is how many hits we're going to get, eight. Finally, what if we have a two up? Brew of sharpness is about the only way I can think this would happen, but that's five six or 83.3%. Now I just showed you how to figure out two thirds, so we can do the same thing with sixths. This is 12 divided by six, that was two. We did that earlier for, for uh, the six up. Now we're just gonna multiply it by five because we have five sixths. So two times five is 10, we get 10 hits here. That was pretty fast, so let's recap. If you need a six up, you divide your dice by six. If you need a five up, you divide your dice by three because it's one third. If you need a four up, you divide by two because it's one half. If you need a three up, you divide by three to get one third and then multiply by two to get two thirds. And if you need a two up, you divide by six to get one sixth, and then multiply by five to get five sixths. So let's apply this to an actual roll. Let's say that halfling spearlings with 30 attacks are attacking. They hit on fives, and they have the hammer of measured force, so we're always gonna wound on a four up. A five up means one third, so we're gonna divide their attacks by three. So 30 attacks divided by three is 10. 10 hits. Now we need to figure out the wounds. So four up means we always divide by two because it's one half. So 10 hits divided by two equals five wounds on average. So now we just need to roll a nerve check. That's 2d6 and wait a minute. We haven't learned how to do 2d6 yet. This is a little different because before, even though we were rolling a lot of dice, we uh, each one of those dice was independent of the other. They didn't matter. They didn't care what the other one was. But this time, these dice are dependent of each other because we're going to add the results. So we're not rolling 1d6. We're rolling 2d6. So let's figure out how to do that. There are six sides on each die, but there are two dies. So that's 12 sides in total. Now, I understand that... There are two ones and two twos and two threes, etc. But mathematically, each one of those are a different result and they're all important. Be sure to remember that in just a moment. Now we have six sides and then another six sides. So if you multiply six by six, you get 36 possible dice combinations. That means that when you roll 2d6, 36 different things could happen. Now we have to figure out our minimum and maximum ranges. This is really easy. So the minimum range is two because you have that that would be the lowest roll you can roll, which is a one on each die. We can't roll a one because two dice are involved. And then our maximum range is 12. That's a six and a six on both sides. So let's figure out what the probability of rolling snake eyes is. You only have one combination. That's one and a one. That means that you only have one out of 36 chances for this to happen. That's 2.8%. Now, I know a lot of you are going to tell me that it's much higher than that, and I understand that. We've all had those weird games, but mathematically, 2.8% is what you should have. But don't tell that to Matthew Schaefer, who I played in Lone Wolf and got three snake eyes on the same unit in three separate turns. I love you, Matt. That was a fun game anyway. Anyone else, comment with your best snake eyes experience below. All right, let's go on to rolling a three. Now, there's more than one result with a three. You can get a one and a two, but you can also get a two and a one. Now, some of y'all might be saying that's the same thing, but it's not. The first result on die one, we have a one, and on die two, we have a two. But remember, each die is independent 
each each die is dependent of each other and that means that if you roll a two on die one and a one on die two that's a separate result that means we have a two and 36 chance or a one in 18 chance if you want to simplify it which is a 5.6 percent chance of rolling a three so that's double the chance of rolling snake eyes now i'm not going to go through every number here but i am going to show you two more one i'm going to show you a four just to break it down easily to see you how show you how it progresses you have one and three three and one we've gone over that but we also have doubles two and two now we're only going to have one of these because you can only get that once because both dice are on two so altogether we have three results which is a three and 36 chance or a one in 12 chance simplified or an 8.3 percent chance for rolling a four we're going to skip a few, but we're going to go to the most important number with 2d6, and that's rolling a 7. Seven's the most important number because it's the most likely number, and it's the most likely number because it has the most results. You can roll a 1 and 6, a 2 and 5, a 3 and 4, a 4 and 3, a 5 and 2, or a 6 and 1. A total of 6 results, which is 6 and 36, or 1 and 6. That's a 16.67% chance, and if you've been paying attention, that's the same likelihood of rolling any one result on a single d6. It's the highest result you can have, but I will point out that 6 and 8 both have 5 results. 7 had 6, which was higher, but rolling a 6 through an 8, there are 16 out of 36 chances, or 4 out of 9 chances, which is 44% likely. Almost half of the results on the 2d6 are going to be 6, 7, or 8. But any time that you need a 7 or less, you're going to be more likely to succeed than not. I'll break that down further on this screen. Now this is a pretty big chart. You can pause the YouTube video to look at it if you want to. But I'll go through the high points here. I have all the dice values on the left, so the results of 2 through 12. How many combinations you need how many combinations there are that can happen there, and then the chance of rolling that number precisely. But more importantly, on the right, I have the chance of rolling that number or above. Obviously, rolling a two or above is 100% likely, but as they break down, um, they show you what you need to get a three or above, a four or above, etc. So if you have someone down to snakes, that means you have a 97.2% chance of breaking them. But if you need a 10, you only have a 16.7% chance, roughly one out of six. So look at this chart and remember it because that's pretty important. You could take a picture of this, maybe print it, and I have a histogram of it in just a moment. So let me go through those. This is a histogram showing the likelihood of each number rolling. You'll see that seven is 16.7%, again, the most likely number. And you'll notice that six, seven, and eight stand as a powerhouse in the middle of all this. You'll also notice this is a pretty perfect bell curve. But this is a more important graph. This is the likelihood of getting at or above the nerve check. So you'll see it teeters down pretty fast after you pass seven for the likelihood of getting it. Eight still pretty good chance you're more likely to fail than succeed, but you still have more than a snowball's chance. Once you get down to 10, 11, and 12, you really are looking at a snowball's chance, not anything you wanna count on. But let's apply this practically. We're almost done here, but let's finally apply this practically. So we have a fallen horde versus goblin rabble, maybe chaff before we get to the good stuff beneath them. A fallen horde has 18 attacks and they hit on a three up. So if they hit on a three up, if you recall, that's two thirds. So what we need to do is we need to divide by three to find one third, which is six, and then multiply that by two to get 12, which is the number of times we'll hit. Now, a goblin rabble regiment has a defense of four and fallen have crushing strength one. So we need a three up to wound. Once again, that's two thirds. So we're gonna divide by three again, 12 divided by three is four, and then we're gonna multiply by two to get two thirds, which is eight wounds. Now, a goblin rabble regiment has a nerve of 12, 14, so we need a six to route and a four to waver. So let's figure out how we figure out the nerve check. There are three separate ways. I'll show them to you. One is intense math. 26 out of 36 results equals a 72.2% chance. You could memorize the whole chart, or 
you could just bring it with you. If you print this out, you'll be in good shape. You can find some of these online, or you could just take a screenshot of my PowerPoint here. Or you could use the method that I normally use, which is the eyeball. Since it's under seven, you know, it's probably going to happen. Maybe it isn't, but, you know, under seven is good enough for me. We'll figure it out from there. I hope that's helpful, guys. But keep in mind, this is just here to help you figure out the average rule. And we all know, playing war games, average is not what you end up getting. In fact, there was this one time that I had this boomer horde and it was going to shoot into the... You know what? Never mind. I, don't, I already know my story. I want to hear yours. Put it in the comments section below. And please like and subscribe to my video. And stay saucy. Happy sauce.